They came in talking tough, but he put them in their place. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Dr. Phil owned spoiled kids. Maybe, maybe we should do this at your school. We should just put Courtney everywhere like they have Dr. Phil here. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at moments where Dr. Phil told off or embarrassed his younger guests. Keep in mind, we're only considering guests who are teenagers or younger. So, people like the self-proclaimed King Keith are safe, this time. But you know what? Let's go ahead and talk to my mom right now about everything I do do at home. Okay. I do a lot. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Number 10, Tamara, obsessed with looking perfect. We understand the desire to want to look your best in public, but there are some people out there who take it way too far. One such individual is Tamara, a 17-year-old who dropped out of high school because of her obsession with her looks. Tamara says she would take three hours to do her makeup with school starting at 7 a.m. On top of that, she spends thousands of dollars on makeup products every month. You might try filling yourself up by giving of your heart and your spirit and your soul, where you actually did something where you weren't totally focused on yourself, but you were focused on somebody else. Phil isn't nearly as savage with her as he is with some of the guests we'll be seeing later on this list, taking a more gentle approach, but he does drop a handful of truth bombs to set her straight. Number 9. Courtney, out of control teen who duct taped a kid's mouth. Courtney is a 17 year old who feels no shame about her overly aggressive behavior. You duct taped a disabled kid's mouth shut. Yes, I did. What the hell are you thinking? He wouldn't shut up. As Dr. Phil tries to understand her way of thinking, Courtney responds with nothing but self-aggrandizing statements, doubling down on her egotistical ways. But when Dr. Phil asks her to explain why she's so special, she doesn't have much to offer by way of response, coming off as a cartoonish embodiment of selfish teens. What is it that's so special about you? Everything. Make a list for me. Everything. Just everything you see, everything I do, I just... Facing the problem head on, the host then promptly suggests they plaster her name all over her school. Way to put her behavior on the spot, Phil. Sadly, in the moment, this teen seems too deluded to understand the point he's trying to make. Number 8. Dakota, self-admitted rebel who physically assaults mother. Whereas most of the kids on our list are the main problems in the house, Dakota is actually the one who called in to see Dr. Phil, wanting to help improve her relationship with her mother. I don't want to have to restrain my child, but when she's punching me in the face <clears throat> and, and hurting me and... She gets points for that, but there are a few times where she really tests his patience. First off, Dakota interrupts Phil to throw some irrelevant shade at the audience. Then, she swears a few times too many. I'm not all up in her face trying to f eat her up. But watch your mouth. Don't talk like that on this stage. Moments after that, Dakota goes on a tangent and pretends that Phil isn't helping. Like any other working person, the doctor doesn't appreciate being told how to do his job, especially if the person he's trying to help is not listening. Why don't you listen to Dr. Phil? <laughs> Number 7. Nicole believes she should tell people they're ugly. Have you ever wondered what goes on inside a bully's head? While we often tend to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume they're struggling with personal problems, sometimes they just make it so hard. You're telling me that you never consider the impact of what you say? No, I do not. Is that because you're not very smart? One of the teens accused of bullying on this episode tries to justify her actions by saying, quote, somebody has to tell people they're ugly, only to talk about how smart she is moments later. <laughs> Phil wasn't gonna let that slide. The best part comes at the end of Phil's thoughts when he negates everything the bully tried explaining. He not only puts her in her place, he peels back the layers to reveal her true motivations, whether she's willing to accept them or not. Uh, uh, do you think I've been disrespectful to you today? No. I've tried to tell you what I think without hurting your feelings. It's just one way of doing things. Number six, Alex. Mother worries he may become a school shooter. The link between aggressive behavior and violent video games is the subject of ongoing debate. But there's clearly more going on here than the video games this kid has been playing. Sometimes to release my anger, I grab a golf club and I go crazy on my door. These are the holes from where I did it. This 12-year-old Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto addict displays some seriously rotten, entitled behavior. 
While talking to Dr. Phil, he kind of shrugs off his abuse towards his mother. To further help him understand how poorly he's treated her, Phil talks him through the various factors that come into raising a kid. Where are you gonna work? You're 12. I can walk dogs. Judging from his responses, Alex clearly doesn't understand everything that goes into being an adult. Hopefully his attitude will change before he hits 18. Do you take her for granted? Sometimes, yes. Number five, Brittany acts hostile towards mom and wants to be a YouTube star. This hostile high school dropout thinks she's got everything figured out. Throughout the show, Brittany makes it clear that high school is stupid, believing she can simply get a GED in cosmetology and crime scene investigation. She thinks she's so smart that she even begins mocking Dr. Phil, claiming that she's got him figured out. You're gonna try and knock me down and pick me apart and find my weak spot. I don't have a weak spot. Oh. After she delivers an extensive explanation on what he does to knock people down and pick them apart, Phil admits defeat, albeit in a condescending way. You sure got me figured out. <laughs> Cancel the show, Phil's been exposed. Seriously, he doesn't need to own this kid. He just lets her talk and she does it to herself. You don't scare me. I'm not trying to. <laughs> He's trying to get you to wake up. Number four, Madison. Parents are scared of daughter. Much like Courtney and Dakota, Madison has gotten so aggressive with her parents, it's become violent, causing her father to believe she might kill them. Never want to talk to you again! Never! Please! When Dr. Phil calls her out for taking her mother's car for a joyride, Madison decides to play dumb. That is, until Phil puts up her social media post on screen. Madison once again tries to derail the conversation, but the doctor is not having it. Well, it's kind of hard to explain away video evidence, isn't it? Phil makes it very obvious that he knows the full story, and he tells Madison that either she can tell the truth or he will. The situation got so intense that Madison eventually walked off stage, only returning after a commercial break. Number three, Danielle Bergoli, also known as Bad Baby, accused by her mother of stealing cars and framing her for a crime. Of course, we had to include this guest on our list. Before she started her career in music, Danielle Bergoli appeared on Dr. Phil's show after her mother accused her of framing her. Catch me outside, how about that? Huh? Catch me outside, how about that? In the middle of her discussion, Danielle taunted an audience member and incoherently blurted out, catch me outside, how about that? It took Dr. Phil a hot minute to figure out exactly what she'd said. Can we blame him? After another bit of broken English, the doc finally, and savagely we might add, asks her what's on everyone's mind. Did you, did you go to fifth grade? Danielle says she dropped out at seventh grade, but something tells us that she didn't retain much from that time. Number two, Gabrielle, smokes weed and claims to be mature enough to be in a sexual relationship. This segment went south real fast. Gabrielle is a pot smoking 14 year old who claims she's old enough to be in a sexual relationship. When it's revealed that her mother has been allowing this behavior, Dr. Phil goes nuts. And when you say, hey, I'm giving her dope because all kids smoke dope anyway, that's absolutely, unequivocally untrue. For a solid two minutes, he tells off Gabrielle's mother for committing a federal crime and nonchalantly admitting it in front of the Department of Children and Family Services. You can roll your eyes and you can be sarcastic all you want. You are committing a crime. Right. Amen. Okay. Yeah. You are committing a crime. Gabrielle begins to act out. But when Dr. Phil is this steamed, you best keep your mouth shut. Even the medical director of the DCFS chimes in, dropping a hard truth on the entire family. If you want to if you want to have a crack at her, I But you're breaking the law. You. Okay. Mm, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, what did you just say? Number 1. Nicolette, selfish and entitled Beverly Hills teen. 15-year-old Nicolette gets $1,000 from her mother every month and wants a car worth over 200 grand. My mom's buying a Bentley for herself. Why can't I get a G-Wagon? Her mother has had it with her, going so far as to nickname her the Beverly Hills Brat. At first, Phil plays along with Nicolette's ridiculous behavior. Nicolette seems to think he's on her side, but oh, how she was proven wrong. Towards the end of the show, Dr. Phil tells her mother that Nicolette needs to get a job. The girl starts crying so much that her tears could fill the doctor's mug. Yeah, absolutely, no. she needs a job. No! <laughs> well, sometime after the show, she did get a job as a social media personality. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.